One could say, I was a bit of a juvenile delinquent. I'd scam my third grade teacher out of class lottery prizes. I stole Beyblades from this kid down the street. <laughs> and I'd steal candy off of my teacher's desk when they'd all leave for lunch. Furthermore, I didn't tell anyone about it. They were Jonathan Abbott's mischievous little secrets. And on the sixth day of September in 2013, I was likely doing that same exact thing, having that incriminating conversation with no one. On that day, someone wanted to celebrate her birthday at a music festival. And after a long day of blaring lights and loud noises, she slogged herself home to sleep on the couch. She was just like you and me. Her name was Beth. Graduation was imminent. Life was good. One can only imagine the secrets that she took with her when Lydia, her sister, came home to find her unwakeable. In an online memoir, Mandy, her mother, notes Beth's favorite quote, I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Beth's mother then notes its irony. What I'm trying to get at is that we never plan on the bad stuff. We never plan on getting detention or getting grounded. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just how things are. I mean, with both of those things, there's really nothing to repair after they're done and done. But you're there after the bad stuff happens. Beth, she doesn't get to choose between making mistakes or fixing them. Whatever she kept to herself is lost forever. And it sucks. There's one thing that you all can plan for, though. Organ donation. And I know it sounds icky, and you're looking at the curtain behind me or whatever and thinking, shut up. But before you, you stop listening to me, how many of you, when faced with that little organ donor checkbox after you, you got your license or your permit, actually checked it? Now, according to Excellus, only 35% of adults in New York checked that box. Out of the 138 that are in the senior class, that's around 48 of you, which is around three center rows. And according to Donate Life, every day you trudge through and complain about, another 144 are added to the national wait list, more than the amount of seniors here. Now, I'm not saying that you need to register, although it would help. All registering really does is put the little heart on your license. Yeah, I hope I can still speak for everyone when I say I'm for it. And according to organdonor.gov, that is just the case. 95% of people are for it nationwide. But for some reason, every long period we go through, someone's grandpa, grandma, son or daughter that has been on the waiting list maybe even over five years passes away. And I refuse to believe that it's because there are not enough people dying. If 95% of people are for it, for giving the grandpa's brother's friend's son of that kid in the classroom down the hall another chance, how are people dying this quickly? And there's one answer. We aren't talking about it. When we don't talk about it and pass away, our families are too grieved to make a decision for us. We take our secrets with us. No one will ever know whether or not we stole Beyblades from some kid in the street, or if we wanted to donate our organs. If we don't talk about it, we're taking more than just ourselves with us. Why are some people against it? Well, most people who refuse to donate have based their decisions on myth. Here's my message to them. You were never too old or sick for donation. Oh, your religion sees it as a final act of grace. No, if the nurse sees that little heart icon in the ICU, she will not pull the plug. Yes, you can still have an open casket funeral. No, no one's going to steal your organs if you're in a coma to sell them. No matter what you've done, what you will do, where you've been, where you will go, who you are, who you will be, you can donate. Now I have to confess. Beth didn't just pass on. I guess you could say I kept the rest of her story a secret. See, what makes her story so amazing to people worldwide is that she talked about it. After she passed, her family knew her decision. Because of a single conversation, two parents get two happy babies, two kids get a father, and a wife gets the love that she deserves. 
Now I have a challenge to ask of you. Okay, hell, me too. I'm guilty. It's a simple one. One that Beth did. Spill our secrets. Let's tell our parents that we will donate our organs and that we should no, actually have to go online after whatever this is today, Google Donate Life, to go to their website, to register online if we haven't already. It takes maybe a single minute out of the 1,440 you have in a day. Because here's something special about secrets, right? They're yours until the instant you tell them. And as soon as you do tell, the person you have just told will tell their multiple friends. And those friends who were just told will now tell infinitely more. Because if there is one special good thing that you should do today, at least before you pass, it's that if you are indeed one of the 0.3% that are eligible for a deceased donation, that if you don't actually have miles to go before you sleep, that you spill your secret that you planned for the bad stuff. And that finally, you will have the conversation that no one else is having. Thank you.